In the last video, we saw how to use the COUNTIF formula to calculate how many times a certain bit of data occurs in a list. And it could be textual data. In this case, we looked at months of the year and the seasons. It could be numerical data, like how many times does two appear. It could be time data. It could be date data. You know, it doesn't matter what that is. It's how many times does something appear. We're going to do that again using count if, but very often when we have a collection of data, we don't have room to do all our analysis on the same sheet. And even if we did, it makes it very cluttered and we'd like to um, organize you know, the questions that we're asking um, and create new sheets for those things. So let's just assume for the sake of this that I wanna calculate how many times the respondents chose different months of the year. And I want that on a new sheet. So I've clicked on the little plus sign, I've added a new sheet, and I've called it function across sheets. And sure, I could do it on this sheet and then I could highlight it and copy it and then I could come over here and I could paste it. And there are all kinds of um, potential problems with doing that. Um, but I can do it right from the new sheet itself. So let me show you this. It's, uh, it's identical to what you did. So I want to know how many times September appears in column B of my responses. So I do exactly as we did last time, equals, count if, and there it is, and I'll just click on it. It's nice to click on it and make sure you didn't spell it incorrectly, and it gives you the opening parentheses of the argument. Now, since I'm working on a different sheet, I don't want to click anywhere over here. Notice if I start clicking anywhere, it starts filling in that data, and that's not what I want. So let me delete that. So I'm back to count if and open parentheses. I'm going to go to the sheet where the source data exists, and I'm going to start selecting that data. And as I do, you see that the range starts filling in. And I'm starting from the bottom because um, the, the dialog box with the formula was sort of in my way. Okay. And you'll notice something new. It kept the same range as we used last time, B2 through B72, but it's added this, these two words, form responses. You notice it's in single quotation marks and it follows by an exclamation point. That's how a spreadsheet designates a certain sheet in your workbook. Okay, notice the sheet with this data on it is called form responses. So it has to add that because I'm working off of this sheet and the formula needs to know what sheet to go get the data from. So I'm saying same thing, count if that range, but look on a different sheet. Okay, now my comma, and I wanna know September, so I could put in quotation marks September, but I can, like we did last time, just click on any instance of September. Again, while everything is still in edit mode in my formula. So I'll come back over here, and I'll just click once on any September, and notice it adds the verbiage form responses with an exclamation point in single quotation marks, again, because it needs to tell it what sheet to look on, and the cell that the value that it's counting. Close my argument with closing parentheses and press enter. And because I was working off of the sheet, it knows to go back to that sheet, and you can see it counted that. And if we look at the formula, it did count if, it did the range and it did the value, but it added the name of the sheet that the range and the value originates from. So it doesn't matter what sheet you're on in your workbook, you can always use data from a different sheet in your calculations on another sheet.